Hi, it's Maura Gamble from our Permaculture Life and the Permaculture Education Institute and welcome into my garden. Today we've been busy doing some trimming of one of our favourite trees here which is the lemon myrtle. So do you have a tree in your garden that's kind of one of the one of the trees that you use on, in your everyday cooking? Um, this one here is one of those for us and that's why we've planted it right here on the edge of our veranda so I can easily access it. Or always coming out for some leaves to get uh, leaves for um, for tea, leaves for cooking. You know the type this sort of leaf here I would just toss into a soup or a stir fry or last night I popped it into a curry. Like anything that you want that kind of lemon zesty flavour because the, the smell of it is just absolutely amazing. It's like my mouth waters every time I, I do this because it reminds me when I was a kid with lemon sherbet or something like that and and uh, so think lemon verbena but even even oh, yeah beautiful flavor so lemon myrtle but the thing is that if it gets too big all the good leaves are up the top and you only get sort of left with the sort of the dry harder ones here so the best way to actually manage it to keep it in your garden particularly here in and around where I've got you know veggie beds and all sorts of things is to keep it nice and short that way it's not going to take its roots too far and it's not going to cast too much shade and the leaves that I want are always within reach so you can use both the leaves and the flowers like this um, and they can be used as a tea um, to flavour honeys. You can use it to um, flavour yoghurt. So simply just take a couple of the leaves and uh, pop them in the top of a tub of yoghurt and then that will um, seep through overnight and create this beautiful flavour. Or you can dry the leaves. So at the moment what we're doing with all the leaves that we've chopped off the top here, we're hanging these up. Um, I've got a whole bundle load in there and I'm hanging them up so that they'll dry just a bit of air flowing um, underneath the veranda there and after a while when they're sort of nice and crispy and dry I'll just shred the leaves off and you can actually turn it into a powder and this powder um, can be used to add into to baking or you can even package it up and that could be something like a micro enterprise from your garden or you could sell the whole dried leaves as well or even just lightly crushed so uh, I was just looking before just to see um, how much they're worth like that just to let you know so for example 25 grams of just lightly crushed dried tea from say something like T2 cost $18 and I saw another place just 10 leaves cost seven dollars fifty so you know it's a really valuable crop I think what I've got in my hand here would be well over hundreds of dollars and so I've got maybe ten of these bundles down there from just a simple haircut so it's interesting to actually think about how can you create small micro enterprises in your garden you know maybe it's something that might help at this time when you know various people have um, lost jobs or looking for extra income if they're income is being cut you know maybe there's some things you can do in your garden from preserving from drying from um, you know doing that kind of thing and products like uh, things like bush tucker plants like which this one is which it's an indigenous plant to this particular part of Australia so around southeast Queensland rainforest margins this one grows beautifully in the in its natural habitat it probably will grow up to maybe eight meters or more um, but here in gardens it's it's easy just to keep them nice and low so I have a number of different plants that I weave into what is turning into something like a forest garden so I have layers of plants so I have the trees and I have um, sort of shrubs and and medium sized perennial plants and ground covers and I talked the other day about um, lemon balm which is down underneath and then scattered within that there's little vegetables and and herbs and edible flowers and uh, you know pumpkin vines spreading off down the side so you know actually creating a garden but that doesn't have to be sorry an edible garden that doesn't have to be a whole series of beds but it's an ecological system and actually what I really love about this is that your garden is as a community and plants like this are really important parts of that they create niches and microclimates and and they produce such an abundance of, of beautiful flavor so as well as um, as well as the just using the leaf like that um, you can also add it into um, into honey to flavor honey and you can also add it into oils to flavor oils for salad dressings um, it's a it is actually a medicinal plant so you can use it to help soothe coughs and colds and um, it's got really great antiviral antibacterial antifungal properties so it's really good at helping to um, relieve you know coughs and colds and things like that so um, but 
And because of it's got its anti, um, antimicrobial um, properties, it's also used a lot in cleaners. So when people take the, um, the essential oil from this plant, then uh, you can mix it in with things like vinegar and, and other sorts of cleaners to um, help to freshen up your home too. So you can use it on your body, in your body and in your house as well and as part of your income. And uh, also because it's a native plant, it's habitat. So like many permaculture plants, it has many different functions. And when you design it into your garden to have those many functions, it, it just um, makes the garden just sing with life and it's just a beautiful thing to have here so I really value um, my lemon myrtle plant so I want to let you know too how to take a cutting because at this time of the year it's probably still okay just to take a cutting so I just wanted to show you uh, how you can take a cutting so you just take a tip cutting so this is the nice new growth you pick one that's looking really great and you only need 15 to 20 centimeters and you chop it off just below a node where it's still when it's turning from green to brown so you can see it's sort of green and then a little bit of brown there so that's kind of the section that you want to get so I'm just going to take off the lower leaves snip them off and then so so I've got at least three nodes which are going to go into the soil and then these top leaves here I'm actually going to snip in half because that helps to reduce the stress on the plant um, and then although I always feel bad doing it <laughs> and and then take off that little leaf uh, new leaf at the top because that will die back so so I'm just going to make a hole in the soil here so you want to have some that's like relatively rich soil that's got nice compost in it well draining and um, keep it nice and moist always have some mulch around the top too I might try and find some more mulch for that little one and then after after you know a month or two you'll find that it's starting to sprout some new uh, sprouts what I tend to do with lemon myrtle in particular is if I say want 10 plants I would take 30 cuttings so just to make sure that I get enough there is a little bit of extra loss in these but they're, they're easy to do but you just got to take that into account don't expect to get everyone to survive so anyway I, I hope that's been useful and I, I really do encourage you to think about how to weave trees into your edible garden area, um, native trees as well, native edible plants and think about how you can turn your um, your vegetable garden, your, um, your main edible garden into something that is more like a forest garden with multiple layers and all different sorts of foods and medicines and herbs and flowers and fruits and nuts and seeds and roots and all sorts of things which is just a magnificent garden that is full of abundance. So thanks for watching. Um, I'll put down some links below of some things that I think might be useful for you and I'll catch you next time. Okay, bye.